production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, supporting arts, advancing culture, and connecting the community to artists, events, and classes at columbusmakesart.com. PNC, committed to Central Ohio, for the achiever in you. From these contributing sponsors and viewers like you, thank you. This time on Broad and High, a young woman shares her experience with war, immigration, and finding a new home in Columbus. I am America, and oh dear, America, I love We'll preview a new film festival in Columbus dedicated to veterans and military families, and music by local indie band Earwig. Just to get your attention. This and more, right now on Broad and High. Hi everyone, welcome back to Broad and High. I'm your host, Kate Quickle. Sarah Abu Rashid and her family fled war-torn Syria when she was 13, eventually finding their way to Columbus. Now a student at Denison University, she is sharing her experience of war, immigration, language, and home in a one-hour, one-woman play. Under the direction of Larry Smith, Rashid explores the relationship between place, identity, and everything in between. It used to be fun being from someplace else. My Uncle Sam tells me, isn't it cool? I have an Uncle Sam just like America's. I am Sarah Abu Rashid. I am 19 years old, and I've been in Columbus for five years. Columbus was not part of the plan initially, but you know it was interesting how we got here and how I came here five years ago not knowing any English. And yet now I am writing and performing a play about language and about belonging. Tonight is a very special night. We are at Denison University where Sarah is a sophomore. And it is our debut performance of A Map of Myself. So I was 13 and in Syria when the war started getting closer to where we lived. We decided to come to Columbus. My first day of school I walked into English class and the teacher said, here is the book we're reading. My eyes wide open as the teacher handed me a copy of the assigned reading. The Odyssey. <laughs> I spoke absolutely no English at the time, and I genuinely thought it was a dictionary. So I remember just going back home and starting to translate every single word into Arabic. If they ask you where you come from, say Toledo, Detroit, Mission Viejo, Paul Springs, Topeka. We do something I think fairly unusual for this format, which is each scene basically ends in a poem, so we're mixing up uh, classic storytelling and theater and poetry. Uh, uh, one poem is done in Arabic. It is, it is one thing to be asked to tell your story for, for an interview or for an article or something, but it's a whole other thing to just stand there and tell it the way you want it to be remembered. There are parts even I don't want to remember. So the fact that I am going to tell them to hundreds of people is, is terrifying. She really gives just a real, humane, and relatable uh, story about immigration. I am America, and oh dear America, I love you, even at times when you do not. You know, I'm delivering a very personal experience that is mine, but also paying tribute to every other immigrant. And at the end of the day, it's, it's our own experiences that make us valid.
Don't miss your chance to see Sarah's one-woman play. She'll be performing A Map of Myself at the Columbus Museum of Art on November 7th and 10th. Visit mapofmyself.com for details. With the approach of Veterans Day, there's a new film festival coming to Gateway Film Center. And it's apparently the first of its kind in the Midwest dedicated to veterans and military families. Here's our preview. I rode shotgun in the lead Humvee, and I looked for bombs. Stop truck. So um, the Gateway and the VA have created this amazing collaboration that I'm very excited about. Um, we are having a two-day art and film festival. We have a few different themes throughout the two days, where um, the first theme is transitional stress and military families. It's too perfect. Is there a specific incident that troubles you? We're starting off with um, thank you for your service. You should go lucky in some way human. After all, don't put the blame on The second me. film, we're very excited. Um, it would also, um, the Veterans Project, it is Ohio-based um, film. And that theme is resiliency and whole health. Combat for me was one of the best things and one of the worst things. Long periods of boredom interrupted by sheer moments of terror. IEDs, um, ambushes, and war is not pretty. Nine months into a deployment, it hits you. It's real. So we're, we're really excited that Sunday, um, on Veterans Day, we will have two films. Both of them are female directors. Um, we have Served Like a Girl. The theme of that movie and the panel discussion is women in the military. We'd be flying 50 feet over enemy territory. I was always attached to infantry and armor. I was a power generator mechanic. I'm a veteran, 11 years, military police. The stuff that we do for veterans in the United States sucks. And then the last um, block is uh, Leave No Trace, which is an incredible film. I wake up rested and peaceful most mornings. True. My day-to-day -day life is full of things that keep me interested. True. I have nightmares or troubling dreams. Is your dad in the service? He was. Do you feel safe living with your dad? We didn't need to be rescued. So we also ha have um, uh, a craft fair and an art fair up on the mezzanine. Um, veterans will be se selling their work. I am a visual artist. Uh, I paint and also I do installation art. I, I deal with a lot of health issues and sometimes it really gets me down. And one of the ways, outside of my motorcycle, one of the ways that I channel that negative energy is through my art. The biggest thing I hope to raise is awareness of the art opportunities that are at the Columbus VA, and also how do we connect um, our arts, rich arts community here in having that open dialogue. I guess that's the biggest hope is that we start conversations that we don't normally have in a space that we've never had before. The Veterans Film Festival will take place November 10th and 11th. For times, details, and to see the lineup of films, visit gatewayfilmcenter.org. Earwig is the latest local band to join us in the studio. Fronted by guitarist Lizard McGee, who's joined by his daughter James on vocals, here they are performing a song meant to get your attention. Take 
Learn more about Earwig and sample more of their music at lizardfamily.com. Our next story is one we originally brought you back in 2013. It's about a powerhouse GOP lobbyist who finds sanctuary in art. When he's not working on political strategy, Neil Clark might be found in his home studio, where he surrounds himself with jars of color. During the day, I'm a lobbyist political consultant. I help people get, re get elected or reelected. On the lobbying side, I'm probably best known as a uh, hired gun. I was in Ma Maui vacationing, and I walked into a gallery, and I saw this Maui prince on a uh, piece of wood. It was uh, made of mosaics, and he charged $2,500. And I said, gee, I can do that and uh, came home and went on the internet. I actually told the people at Mountain Mosaics, give me a sample of uh, glasses, I'm gonna wanna do a gecko, so give me some greens. And got back a tiny box that, was, that enabled me to produce my first piece, which was a gecko that was very small. And I said, oh, I think this is gonna be an expensive hobby. All of the pieces I do make usually are given away. It's one of the easiest ways to get motivated to do more is to let them take it. Uh, most of my Maryland pieces are my favorite. I've done three or four Maryland's and it really a piece that people, when they come to the house, uh, go right to it and take it off the wall. Uh, but Jackie O, uh, uh, Jackie also goes really quick. 
I think I've made three Jackies, and they were all given to people that were Democrats. I never know what happens to them. Most of the people are, are amazed that I even have the patience to sit down and do this. Uh, I think a lot of people in town would think that my reputation is one of high intensity and uh, take no prisoners. So I'm, you, when I come into this, they go, there's this softer side of Neil, and uh, I don't look at it as a soft side. I look at it as, I love the art of glass. Sometimes the pieces come in a big sheet with um, uh, pieces that I then crack. Other times they're already cracked and I put them into jars that are surrounding this room. Smalty is a, like a big uh, sheet of glass that is baked like a pizza. And so the colors tend to be really bright. The, the smalties come in oranges and reds and pinks, and, but it's very difficult to work with because it comes in a very thick piece and in order to cut it, uh, you use another device that, that is very much stronger. So each piece to break it um, probably gives you just a little bit of pain when you're doing it. So I don't do many small tea pieces because by the time I'm done with a piece, you know, my fingers are pretty well beat up. The, the hardest part in this process is getting into the groove of cracking the pieces. Once I'm in the groove, I can uh, clearly move quickly. I've gotten better at estimating about what I'm going to do and how I'm going to put a piece in, but generally um, it goes pretty quickly once you, once you figure out how your angles are going and get the experience of it. Uh, this is just a well-bound kind of glue. Um, it's enough to keep these on until it's grouted. It's the grout that is really going to keep it together. This particular piece is for my, an anniversary gift for my, my wife. You know, when, when others are out playing golf, and they'll put eight hours into playing golf to score 90. Um, at the end of that day, there's not very much left other than a memory. This, I get the memory and a piece that will last probably for 100 years. I think everyone has it in them to do art. Do the best you can with what you have, and I think it's that in itself gives you a lot of self-confidence. Dayton is where we find textile artist Frances M. Turner. She expresses her heritage through the beautiful handcrafted cloth dolls she creates entirely by hand. Here's her story. Well, to start with, the dolls that I make are cloth, and it is a black silhouette that you see. I try very hard for you to be able to see an individual. It is the gesture, the stature that a person has. When I'm deciding what I want my pieces to look like, it's the people that I encounter. Sometimes it's the way a gentleman stands, stands back in his legs, the lilt of his head the way a lady looks when she's wearing a hat because she knows she looks good in it. I find a lot of things that I do are based on what my parents did and what they told me that their parents did. And so it is a heritage that I express in the way my pieces present themselves and the way they wear their clothes. You will not find one doll in this house that doesn't have on a hat. My dad wore hats, my mother wore hats. She wore gloves, heels. I want my ladies to look like ladies, which means that they have manners. I want my men to look like gentlemen because they are mannerable. And these are the things that was taught to me by my parents. My mom and dad both um, were from Louisiana. 
My grandmother and grandfather, they had 15 children. They were hardworking, good down-to-earth people. My mother used to tell stories, so did my dad, about people in their life growing up in the country. And they just seemed like just an adventure. The names are the things that stuck with me. First and middle name, John Earl or Ruth Ann. And Audrey Rose was another name that I enjoyed hearing and I liked the lilt and the ring to the name. And I chose those names sometimes for my people uh, that make them familiar to me. They appear to be more than just a doll. They are figures and they are real. They are vibrant. They are alive. They speak to you. And they speak to you in a lot of different ways. I work at price stores and I work on tuxedos. And I have done that for the last 25 years. And it does not get old. There are a lot of weddings, funerals, special occasions. But once all that is over, that garment eventually finds its way and it's retired. And once it's retired, then it finds new life with me to become whatever it is that I want it to become and still look alive, youthful, adventurous, exciting. The very first quilt that I made professionally, I did for Sarah Coxwell, who was head of City Folk. Because I had never um, made a quilt before, everything that I ever thought could be a part was a part. I made a small doll and a doll dress. I used the stone beads around her neck. I used suede cloth and traced my hand. There's the eye of Africa, the all-seeing eye. Then there are 10 eyes. And then off to the side is the one hidden eye that's always watching. And it was like it was a map rather than a quilt because I was going from region to region, person to person, thing to thing, and using all these colors. And in between, I did a very bold satin stitch so that as you looked at the quilt, you could go from one piece and one place to another and still be able to see each piece and not be confused. And I believe that that is the gesture and the mainstay for the kinds of quilts that I do. I've got a lot to say, and I want you to be able to go from one part of that conversation to the next and not lose anything in between. I am an artist, and I like the idea of saying that I'm an artist. It has been a journey that I have enjoyed immensely and look forward to every moment that I get a chance to do it. That's our show. You can check out all of our stories at WOSU.org, or you can download our free WOSU public media mobile app. Of course, you can always find us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're closing the show today with more music by Earwig. For all of us here at WOSU, I'm Kate Quickle. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next week. Justify the evidence that you ever care.
Dina Lawson is born in 1979 and has become a really you know, influential photographer. This work pictures is 48 images of her, the artist's cousin, Jasmine, um, visiting her partner in Mohawk Correctional Facility uh, with their children. Um, but what I think is really sustains this piece is the evident care and love and the sort of bonds of family that persist in this situation. And they are, you know, despite that sort of difficult circumstances, a really kind of beautiful and touching image of a family. Catch Columbus at its creative best on Broad and High, Thursday nights at 8 o'clock on WOSU-TV. Production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, supporting arts, advancing culture, and connecting the community to artists, events, and classes at columbusmakesart.com. PNC, committed to Central Ohio, for the achiever in you. From these contributing sponsors, and viewers like you. Thank you.